Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. As part of our Forbes feature series, spotlighting thought-provoking Forbes videos and their key takeaways, today I explore Julie Sweet's recent Forbes video, Accenture CEO's Advice to Women, Stand Out. Welcome back to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I'm excited to be with you again today for this Forbes feature series episode. Today I'll be exploring Julie Sweet's recent Forbes video, Accenture CEO's Advice to Women Stand Out. In this video, we hear lessons in reinvention, self confidence, and the power of embracing your fears from Julie Sweet, the CEO of Accenture North America. Thanks for joining me today, and I'll catch you on the flip side of this first clip. There'll be plenty of times where being a woman is probably not helping your career. So when it does help your career, take the opportunity and then stand out. One of the most pivotal moments in my life was actually when I was a sophomore in high school. And my dad used to take me to a speech contest, and that was a way for me to earn money to save for college. And I remember it was the Lions Club, and I was in the final round, and I lost. And I went home, and I was kind of complaining. And my father said to me, you really have to be so good that they have to give it to you. And you weren't. It was a really good lesson for me. I really took to heart the idea of excellence and no excuses. It's a little bit awkward for me to comment on this video as I'm a middle-aged white man and not a woman. Now, while I can't completely relate to the plight of women in the workforce and women in leadership, and I can't understand all of the gendered biases uh, and prejudices that, that women have to deal with, on an ongoing basis. I can't understand that firsthand. I at least conceptually understand it, and I want to be an ally and an advocate for uh, female equality and equity. And so it hurts my heart a little bit when I hear her open up this video with this experience and her father telling her that she can't allow them any excuse to not give it to her. She has to make it that obvious in order for her to be able to win. And unfortunately, that is the world we live in, largely. Um, It's a male-dominated world. Patriarchy abounds. And unfortunately, often women are uh, put in a position where they have to not only be the best, but they have to be the best by far. They have to erase any amount of question or doubt in the minds of those around them that they are the most qualified. Otherwise, oftentimes uh, a position or a raise, promotion, uh, a, a big project, whatever, it ends up going to a man. Uh, and so this this is a harsh reality. And so her father's trying to prepare her for that. And for that, I appreciate you know his, his efforts to prepare his daughter. It just stinks that that's the world we live in. And as a father of four daughters myself, uh, it, it makes my heart hurt to think that perhaps they will be in the same kind of male-dominated world uh, like she is describing. I hope that we're improving. I hope that we're getting better and that we're in a situation uh, as my children uh, reach the workforce where they won't have to deal with all these biases and, and prejudices, at least to the same extent. But I know that's probably wishful thinking um, and probably being a little bit naive on my part. Uh, But she's about to go into more in terms of lessons and tips and ideas that women can have as they're trying to be leaders in the workforce uh, and leaders 
uh, as women. And I, I hope you enjoy her insights. You made what some would see as a, a surprising or bold career move after spending 17 years at a law firm to make the move to Accenture. Did you see that as, as a career risk or a big jump? I don't think I fully contemplated how much of a risk it was. I was really thinking about how do I want to live my life? I was 42 years old and I said, I can see my future. Like I know what the next 20 years are gonna be like if I stay here. And Accenture really provided an opportunity to challenge myself. Because if you think about it, I went from the young girl who had never traveled outside the US who went and studied Chinese. Then I went to law school and I grew up in a family that didn't sort of live in the corporate world. Then I became general counsel at a company of technology and I didn't know that. And so. It, each time you make a choice, and it's a choice about reinvention. I love the idea of reinvention and that she was willing to upend her successful career because she didn't feel challenged or stretched, and she couldn't see herself doing that for the next 20 plus years. So she opted instead to reinvent herself and to move into a new role that would be challenging, that would stretch her where she could develop new capabilities and capacities, new competencies. And I think that's a really powerful message for women leaders and women in the workplace who aspire to become leaders, that if you're staying where you're comfortable, uh, then ultimately you're, you're not going to get to those places where you have the most opportunity to influence. Now, I, I get it. Uh, not everyone wants to aspire to be a CEO, or an executive, and that's totally fine. Uh, people have uh, widely different motivations for their careers and their lives and what they hope to accomplish. But I hope that no woman will sell themselves short or feel like they can't try and stretch and reach for something. There's a lot of research that shows that often women will not apply for a stretch position because they don't feel like they meet all of the requirements for the position. They, they don't feel qualified. Whereas men, if men even only have 40 to 50% of the qualifications in the posting, they'll still apply because they figure why not. And so I just hope that women won't feel like they can't try for those opportunities, that they can't get out of their comfort zone, that they can't stretch and reinvent themselves as they go. Uh, because ultimately that's where the most personal growth go comes and that's where the greatest opportunity for impact of those around you uh, will also come from. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, the Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. I'm excited to share my insights with you. How would you describe your leadership style now and how has it evolved over time? I've always been someone who has been collaborative, but I would say it's collaboration on steroids. I learned early in my career that tapping into the best people and not having an ego, right? really knowing what you don't know and what you do know and how to bring teams together is how to be most effective. Having intellectual humility is so important for any leader if you want to be successful. 
Now, checking your ego at the door and recognizing you're not the expert on all things and really tapping into the collective genius of your people. And I like how she talks about uh, collaboration on steroids, that when you truly recognize the potential of your people and you recognize their expertise and you empower them and you rely on them, then you can accomplish so much more. And that's something that she saw as a leader that she could really utilize to maximize her own potential. So check your ego at the door, have some intellectual humility, know that you don't have all the answers, rely on those around you, support those around you. And you know what? They're going to end up supporting you and they're going to end up making you look good. That's a lesson for all leaders, but I think it's, it's definitely important for female leaders as well. Uh, because the, you're under the spotlight and the scrutiny is on you and you have the opportunity to, to really demonstrate your capacity through leveraging the capacity of all of your people. It's not fair that the spotlight is on you more so than maybe your male counterparts, but that's the way it is. And that's one of the reasons why she's been so successful in her career. Throughout your career, you're someone who has always pushed yourself outside of your comfort zone. What pushes you outside of your comfort zone now? I feel like every day I'm being pushed outside of my, com <laughs> my comfort zone because, you know, what, what we're doing as a company is trying to help our clients lead disruption instead of being disrupted. One of the ways that I keep myself like kind of grounded is my, my husband bought this little sign that hangs on our wall and it says, if your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. And so when I'm facing uncertainty or worried about, you know, is this the right strategy in the face of what we need? I think about that and say, okay, good. If I'm a little scared, it must mean that I'm doing the right thing. Lead disruption instead of being disrupted. That requires you to be comfortable with ambiguity, comfortable with uh, uncertainty. And I recognize that most people don't like uncertainty. In fact, we, we rely on certainty as humans. Uh, that's part of the human condition, I think, that we're hardwired to prefer certainty. Uh, but the reality isn't certain. The reality is uncertain. The reality is complex. The reality is ambiguous. And so as we recognize disruption is going to be the norm moving forward, we either can be proactive in being the disruptors or we can be reactive and be disrupted. And ultimately, she has decided that for her and her leadership style, that she's going to embrace the uncertainty, she's going to lean into the ambiguity, and she's going to leverage the collective genius of her people in order to disrupt those around them rather than wait around and see how they get disrupted and have to respond. I think that's a, a great lesson for all leaders. And I think for female leaders, it also helps you understand that you don't need to worry and be scared of the uncertainty. Um, I, I get it. It's, it's human nature, but lean into it. Uh, recognize your capacity. Have confidence in yourself. Know that you can do it. And I think she is a fabulous example of that. If you were to rewind the clock 20, 25 years and were writing a letter to your younger self, what advice would you have loved to have been given at that point in time or to have heard? I would say to believe in yourself because I've often like worried and spent more time like not having confidence, reached what I wanted to and then realized, wow, I was a lot better than everyone else, right? And I think uh, you really have to have, follow your instincts and have confidence to make the journey a little bit less stressful. I think ultimately that's the main message of this video. Believe in yourself. That's important for all leaders. Uh, but again, the research shows that oftentimes uh, female workers and women leaders uh, don't give themselves enough credit. They are very capable. They're very talented. They are just as well prepared for positions and opportunities and, and projects as their male counterparts. Um, but maybe it's because of humility. I'm not sure. 
Uh, but men are oftentimes disproportionately more likely to just dive on in, even if they don't really know what they're doing. Uh, that kind of says a lot about um, gender roles, I suppose, and patriarchy. Uh, but regardless of, of all of that and, and without taking the time to unpack all of that, I think ultimately we can just remember, like, have confidence in yourself. Know that you are capable. You can do it. Have some confidence. Move forward into the dark. Uh, lean into the uncertainty. And if you do that and, and you really leverage the collective capacities of those around you, you will stand out. You will stand out more than your colleagues. And when you stand out, you will be able to to shine a light on all of your accomplishments and the accomplishments of your people. It's not about ego and it's not about you being the very best, but, but when you have that kind of excellence in your work, it, you, it will, the, the highlights will naturally come. The spotlight will naturally come to you and shine on what you're doing. And that's the opportunity that all individuals I think have in the workplace and I, I wish that more female workers, female leaders would take advantage of those opportunities because they're there and they're, they're ready for you to take and you just have to reach for it. Have confidence in yourself. and You can do it. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. As always, I hope you stay healthy and safe. I hope you find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free, interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.